Hello, I'm at the National Motor Museum at Bewley to tell you about this weekend's Singapore Grand Prix, a fantastic event. It's a night race, it's unique. It's like driving around the streets of Monaco at night with the lights on, amazing. So we're going to have a close look at the circuit itself, which is so very different. And then we'll establish where the drivers are in the Castrol driver rankings. And I want to talk to you about one of the top drivers, very famous son, of a very famous Formula One world champion. You probably know who it is. But first, here's the latest news. After just a month as the Pirelli test driver, Nick Heidfeld returns to Formula One on the grid for Sauber in Singapore. Reports suggest that Kimi Raikkonen has approached Renault for a drive next year. The French company say a decision will be taken on commercial grounds and when they're ready. In the meantime, Kimi won his first rally at the weekend. The Rally Vaujean is a club-level event near Strasbourg, and the Kimster said it will give him some valuable practice on tarmac. But has it improved his Castrol driver ranking? There can't be many firsts left in Michael Schumacher's F1 career, but this weekend he'll drive an F1 car in a night race for the first time. Finally, news coming thick and fast out of Lotus. They're changing their engines to Renault next year and the name to Team Lotus. But what about the drivers? Boss Tony Fernandez has not confirmed anything yet other than he'd like Heike to continue. So what about Yano? A lot of people wondered whether a night race at Singapore was going to be a success. Well, it's been a gigantic success and hardly surprising because the sight of Formula One cars in all their power and glory blasting round Singapore at night is one that is absolutely unique and something to behold. It's a very spectacular circuit, you'd expect it to be at night, and all the time in the background there are the skyscrapers with their twinkling lights, surrounded by a crowd which is very excited at the drama that's going on in front of them. Wonderful experience. So, let's have a close look at the Marina Bay circuit. There are two special features about Singapore. It's a night race and the track is raced anti-clockwise. The circuit's a good five kilometres long and it weaves around Marina Bay in the south of Singapore. And into turn one, it's the first good chance to overtake. It then goes right across the man-made harbour and into the city's entertainment district. Then, at top speed towards the Esplanade Theatre, before braking just after it to less than 100 kilometres an hour. Turn 13, the tight left-hand hairpin after the historic Anderson Bridge, has been modified to increase cornering speed and a faster speed on the Esplanade Drive, increasing the opportunity for overtaking in the braking zone at turn 14. Cars can reach up to 275 kilometres an hour here. Like Monte Carlo and Valencia, Singapore is a typical street circuit. 90 degree turns and with top speeds of 300 kilometres an hour. A tough test for brakes and tyres. On the last corner before the start finish line, the cars race past the world's highest ferris wheel and at top speed onto the final straight. He's doing really well this season. He's making Schumacher look really slow. He's a pretty cool guy, really good driver. If his car performed better, he could be a, a championship contender. So, who is the mystery driver? Well, I'm sure you've worked it out for yourself. It's Nico Rosberg, son of 1982 world champion Keki Rosberg. And it's very much a case of like father, like son because Nico is absolutely brimful of talent. Like many of them, he started off in karts and he went up to GP2 where he became champion and then on to Formula One in the Williams team. Didn't do all that well with Williams, but that was the team he cut his teeth with and now he's partnering Michael Schumacher in the Mercedes team and out driving seven times world champion Michael Schumacher. Who ever thought that that would happen? Is Nico Rosberg a potential race winner? Most certainly he is, when they get the car right. Is he a potential world champion? I would say he is. Let's see where he is in the Castrol driver rankings. 
Kimi Raikkonen moved up three places to 65th this week as some of those around him dropped points. He didn't actually score, but he's fallen from 15th at the start of this year. Jimmy Johnson, the highest ranked driver in action this week, did not change his fifth place as the NASCAR Sprint Cup chase for the championship got underway. Will Power was the highest placed mover, Scott Dixon of IndyCar was the big loser as he dropped eight places from 10th to 18th. Now the first Grand Prix at a circuit isn't always the most exciting, but my goodness, 2008 at Singapore had it all and a whole lot more. First of all, there was the drama and the novelty of a night race at a street circuit. Secondly, we had Felipe Massa in the Ferrari, charging round and seeming to be absolutely set for a famous victory, until he charged into the pits and then charged out again with the massive fuel line still attached to his car. But in the meantime, Nelson Piquet in the Renault had crashed on the 14th lap. Little did we know it at the time, but he'd crashed deliberately, which enabled his teammate, Fernando Alonso, to take advantage of him in strategy terms, come through and win the race. And we subsequently, of course, had all the drama of Nelson Piquet being excluded from Formula One. And if that isn't drama at a race, I don't know what is. Singapore is terrific. For more information, go to castrodriverrankings.com.